So there is bad communication and no communication. Guess which one happened this time. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about the AVN Expo. We are not going to be talking about AVN Awards in this video because that'll be a completely separate video. So AVN stands for Adult Video Network, stands to reason I will have to talk about adult topics in regards of this video. However, this is still an event review and I will be covering this the way that I cover any other event. But by the nature of the event itself, and even with all of the blurring I'm going to be doing and tiptoeing around some topics, there is a high likelihood that this video will be demonetized. So because of that, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. In an effort to not get this video taken off of the platform or age restricted, we will be blurring a lot of the B-roll that I got from this event. However, the unedited B-roll will as always be put on Patreon. Obviously when I do these events, I am not really vlogging, I'm getting B-roll because I have learned over time that you guys like seeing me talk about these events versus just me vlogging from these events. So all the footage I take ends up being used as B-roll for these videos. However, I can't possibly use all of the B-roll that I got. So the unedited compiled B-roll usually gets shared to Patreon. So if you would like to see the unedited vid-roll, which hopefully will also have no blurring if it's allowed, will be on Patreon. And that's one of the perks that you get as a patron for this channel is unedited B-roll videos when it applies. But yes, let's get to the topic at hand, AVN Expo. So I've heard about AVN for years and I had heard that it was at the same time as CES, but I didn't really think much of that. CES was something that I've been trying to go to for years and it's just never really worked out. And so when I was like, okay, well I can finally go to CES, I was like, oh cool. AVN's the same weekend. Let's do both. Get two videos at least for one trip and I'm getting three videos out of it. So it works out. So as far as attendees go, AVN really has two classifications, industry and fan. That's really it. So though I had a VIP uh, pass that cost me $600. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I was still classified as a fan. I was not considered industry, which is fine. I'm not asking to be considered industry because I'm not in the industry. Now I sprung for the most expensive pass for a reason because CES, the other event that I was attending in Vegas at the same time, I got to go to for free. If you want to hear more about that, go watch that video. That's partially why I was able to justify the $600 pass. Typically when I do an event, I do try to get the VIP option so that I can review as much as possible for you. I do <laughs> try to be responsible with my business spending, even if it is a tax write-off. The VIP that I bought was $600 for all four days, including the after parties and as well as the AVN awards, okay, were included. When I was actually at the event, I checked it again to see what the deal was. I believe it was $400 or $499, okay? Okay, so $500, but I believe that that did not include the AVN awards. So like I said in the intro, there is bad communication and there is no communication. I paid $619.50 and that's the all access four day pass. So that's all four days. That is all I got from that. And then after that, two emails from the AVN show. Okay, and I, I never reached out to AVN themselves or like logged in, this was all done through Eventbrite. So the AVN show is around the corner. We're checking to see if you've booked your hotel room yet. That was December 7th. I had received nothing prior to that. And then I got another one uh, a few days later talking about the discounted roommates. So like I said, the event started on the 4th. I got an email again on the 2nd, letting me know that my event was coming up and that I don't, to not forget my tickets. And I got, Nothing else, no other information, nothing really much about what my um, tickets included. The only thing on here for the Eventbrite itself, because most of it's been closed, obviously, is the show hours. VIP would actually get us in an hour early for the expo floor. General admission would not start until one most days and VIP would get in at 12. I got in line for AVN about 12.30 actually. And I went to the event center, which was in the district inside Resorts World that would then lead you up to their expo center where their event was taking place. I got in line and it was just one long line. And so I asked someone, is there another line for a VIP? No, they're all out of whack. They'll get it fixed later, is what I was told by security. I don't know if this was hotel security, event security, but it was a security guard who said, there's only one line, they're working on it. 
And then we would go up the escalator, then it got in line. Some guy behind me had only gotten the VIP day pass, I believe. And he was like really agitated that there was one, only one line and two, that he was not inside already because it was 1230 at that point, basically. Once you got up the escalator, you were pretty much sorted pretty quickly into the actual lines, which were VIP and then general admission to go and get your wristband, sign your waiver that consent to one, you being on camera, but also, uh, conduct really to be appropriate and respectful. Got checked in, went back into another line to go through security where they would check your bag and you would go through the little metal detector thingy. There was once again, all one line to get through this checkpoint and people who were like, we're VIP and would kept trying to cut ahead. You were wearing the same wristband I am. Just get in the line, God. So we go inside. Now straight ahead when you walk in is what looks like another expo hall around the corner. We will talk about that in a second. Again. I was not told much of anything. They were just like, okay, cool. This gets you in all four days. That's the only thing that I would say was consistently repeated to me as to what this got me because I was still very confused as to what this got me. Obviously it was supposed to get me in an hour early, but this wasn't happening this day. Fine. No big deal. The music was incredibly loud the entire time. Fine. I get it. However, you know, people are going to be filming because you have people webcamming the entire event, which is very smart. However, this did make me wonder if webcammers have to worry about copyright claims with they have music playing in their live streams. Cause sometimes they do uh, sales of uh, uh, videos and stuff afterwards. Do you guys have to worry about music copyright claims or like video copyright claims? I'm genuinely wondering because like, I, I really, I didn't really get an answer, but I also didn't really get the chance to really talk to any of the actual web cameras because they were working the entire time for the most part. They were chatting with people and stuff, but it was like, I didn't want to invade on those conversations because these were people for the most part who was like, who were like genuinely fans of these models. And I did not recognize any of them personally. So I was like, eh, that's their time. You know, I'm just, the voyeur of this whole event. <laughs> oh, I really was, wasn't I? <laughs> so like I said, they had uh, music going the entire time, which I believe was sponsored entirely by Bad Dragon uh, Sex Toys. Cool, I didn't know they did DJing. I can't show most of what was in that hall. I believe that was the Magnolia Hall or, um, they were all named after flowers, which was kind of cool. Um, I don't think I can show you any of what was in that hall because though everyone was covered up and that was part of the rule, you actually couldn't even wear pasties at this event. You did have to be covered. The Images <laughs> did not have to be covered. So though the models are covered in a lot of the uh, footage I have of walking through the expo hall, their images in their booths did not have to be covered. So there's a lot of titties. So they had a couple of different setups for the My Free Cams booth. They were the major sponsors of the event. I believe it was presented by My Free Cams. Outside of the main halls, they would have uh, the desks set up with uh, all the My Free Cam branding with a bunch of different uh, freebies and stuff. So it was smart with both My Free Cams and Chatterbait, which was also uh, another one of the webcamming companies that was set up out there, is that they had different models live streaming the entire event. There wasn't someone in every single spot, but they would pretty much go like do their own like time slots, I guess, throughout the event so that each time you walked by, there was probably at least one model camming at the same time, which was very smart in my opinion, because it's like, oh yeah, look, come check me out as I'm camming. It kind of minimizes that like distance to the model as well. It's like, oh, this is how I see the model online. This is how I'm seeing the model in person. Very smart. It builds up hype for the models that adds kind of not legitimacy. That's not the right word. Just kind of shows that you're a little more established, a little more like, oh, she's at AVN right now. What's AVN? I want to go to AVN. Can I go to AVN next year? So it's smart on the part of the expo itself, but also for the models involved. It's just another way of exposure. Again, that makes me wonder about the music. See, this is what I think about. I think about the business side of things, not just like money, but also like, what do you have to deal with? <laughs> like, I wonder what you have to deal with. Like this one live stream where you were like sitting on like a uh, simian. Uh, Simeon, Sibian, Simeon, the, the seat rumble of things. The motor bunny was the main one there, but that's not the one that I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with Simeon's, uh, <laughs> you know, when you, the, you, that you were playing Jason Rulo's <laughs> song, like what, what do you have to deal with? You know, I wonder, obviously there was Pornhub, there was browsers. There's a bunch of other companies that I had not been familiar with and a bunch of companies that are like OnlyFans, which I thought was interesting because obviously OnlyFans was not actually at this event, at least where I was. We'll talk about that in a second. Fansly was there and a couple other ones that I actually never heard of, but they were seemingly in my understanding operating similarly to OnlyFans and where a bunch of them operated much better than OnlyFans is that they took a smaller percentage of the income from the models. I don't know what the actual phrasing people would like because everyone was referring to them as models, but like, I don't know if that's like the proper term. Is, is models the proper term for that? 
like, because I, I, I'm fine with not saying adult models, but like usually with OnlyFans creators and fancy creators and the like, if they make adult content, I usually just say adult content creator. But I don't know if that's proper, so just let me know. A lot of the models that were there and what happened a couple of times is people would do airdrops of their like links page, which was very smart. I always think this is brilliant. Just start doing airdrops of your links page, especially if you are making adult content at an adult content convention someone's gonna hit accept, you know? You're gonna get at least one or two new people. I recommend doing it sparingly. Do not just keep doing it rapid fire. Do it like once or twice every hour as you're at an event and do it in different areas. If you're standing in the same spot and you just keep doing it, sure the people around you are moving, but everyone who's not moving that's also in the same area as you is gonna get super goddamn annoyed. <laughs> so do it sparingly. But I do think there is a smart way to do this. All the models that I did speak to were very nice. I don't think I had any real bad uh, experiences with any models that I spoke with or met even in passing briefly, everyone was very nice. The only time that I think that there was one little thing where I was like taken aback a little bit, but I don't even think it was me. I think she was speaking to someone else, but I think it, I just, my anxiety was like, it's you. She's talking to you. Um, there was one point where I was walking through the expo hall and this girl was in a body stocking. Okay. Walking by me. And she had her hand like right here, like over her chest. And I wouldn't even say it was like over her cleavage. It was just like on her chest. So I thought maybe she was hurt or something because that's where her hand was. And she's in like this bright blue body stocking. And so I looked down to be like, is she injured? Like that's where my brain goes. And she goes, stop it. And then kept walking past me. And I don't know if she was talking to me or not because she just kept moving. There was a lot of people around us, but part of me thinks that she was talking to me because I looked at her chest. And I feel bad if I did. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I thought you were hurt. I swear to God. <laughs> That's just my social anxiety and my anxiety in general. <laughs> so you have the main expo hall that again has like the bigger names in it. And then there was another expo hall that it was kind of literally set up like how every other convention I've gone to sets up like their signing booths, okay? Where they have the models on one side with a couple of brands sprinkled in here and there, a couple of uh, management companies sprinkled in there, there or uh, websites that were like, hey, we wanna bring X amount of our models to do signings in this hall. Um, so there was, one row, another row, another row, another row, another row. And then they're in those rows as well where companies and brands and all of that sprinkled inside there selling uh, toys, merch, accessories, harnesses, lingerie, things like that. And then the models were also selling things here and there. It was funny. I actually got recognized more at AVN than I did at CES, even though there was a much more people at CES. And I think what that tells me is that I am hot with porn stars. That's what that tells me. <laughs> One person in particular who um, stuck out in my mind because I did think this was very funny, um, Megan, hi. She stopped me and was like, oh my gosh, I watch you on YouTube. And I looked down to see her name on her badge and she was like, oh yeah, sorry, they're out. Cause her, she was wearing a bra top. <laughs> And I was like, oh no, I was looking at your badge. And she was like, oh. <laughs> and I just thought that that was very funny to me. <laughs> but yeah, it was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting everyone. Um, everyone was very sweet um, and was just like, oh yeah, no, I'm excited to see the video. So I hope you all like this video. Um, that just, that was story in particular, just I've told some people that story. Across the hallway from that hall was another hall. This one was much more sparse. There was another chatter bay. This was also mostly for like the male models in there, um, but it was much smaller. Um, their main things in this room as well were um, a uh, display section for um, adult. How do I explain this in a way that won't get me? There was demonstrations here, some kink demonstrations. I think I can say that. There was a uh, Geeky and Kinky, which was a little shop that did uh, a bunch of merch and stuff, but like it was like uh, takes on like pop culture characters and stuff, but like in like kink positions and all of that. So I bought uh, Slutty Captain America, uh, Shibari Velma, Drag Queen Leatherface, and um, a Leather Daddy uh, Jason. <laughs> I bought pins of all of those, which was fun. If you followed me on Instagram, you already saw those. I don't think I can post them here. There was also the decriminalized sex work, I believe. Was it decriminalized or the wording of decriminalized versus legalized versus destigmatized? That's all very important when you're talking about topics like this. And I will link their website down below if you are interested in hearing more information about that. And they had a lot of pens and I was like, can I take a pen? Because I like to ask. She was like, oh my God, take as many as you want. I, I brought so many and I don't want to take them back with me. There was another site uh, for the Erotic Heritage Museum that I had never seen until this event, actually, until I was at staying at Resorts World because the one road that leads into Resorts World goes past the Erotic Heritage Museum. How come I've never heard about that? 
been there for a while. I now have a discount code to get in. I did not have time to go this trip, but I will go next time. Also, did you guys know there are adult themed escape rooms? Not sure if it was Deja Vu or Little Darlings that do it, but apparently there are uh, weed themed escape rooms, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey escape rooms. That seems like a blast. And they were like, yeah, if you want, if you're drunk and you want to come in and do an escape room at three in the morning, we won't ask any questions. <laughs> That sounds great. I recently discovered my love of escape rooms. They're just very fun with a group of people. And now you're telling me we can do it high? <laughs> that sounds so fucking chaotic. Oh yes, lack of communication. So inside the main hall, I believe behind the devil angels, angel devils, whatever that side is called, behind their display and behind, I believe it was Brazzers as well, was a booth that said VIP, as in this VIP. And I was like, oh, okay. So I walked up and I said, hi, can you tell me what this gets me exactly? And she hands me an AVN hat. I was like, here you go. Did not know I was getting a hat. Also not what I meant, but that's okay. I mean, I got a hat. I mean, I was really just trying like, okay, what does this get me into? Everything. Okay. As I was walking out, people had said like, oh yeah, no. So it's this hall, this hall, this hall. And then there's one around the corner. Back at the entrance where I come in, straight ahead through the walkway that face over faces the rest of the district for resorts world. There was another expo hall that said, I believe a E N a N E. Okay. Now, a N E I later learned is the industry side of the event. Fine. I just would have liked to have been told I wasn't allowed in there. Cause I tried to walk in. Like I held up my wristband because this has gotten me and everywhere else held it up. Where's your badge? Sorry. You need a badge to get in. Oh, okay. I'm thinking maybe I was just handed this and I was supposed to go to the other because there was another set up hall. I'm thinking maybe I had to go there for my badge. So I walk up there. I was like, hi, I was told I need a badge to get in there. Was I supposed to get a badge with this? Uh, let me check. Check with someone. Someone walks up. I think he's associated with the event itself. I don't know. I think he's one of the runners, not just one of the employees. I was like, what does this get me into? So he walks up and he was like, yeah, that's only for industry. I was like, oh, okay. So what does this get me into then? Where does this get me? You can't go in there. Okay. I'm fine with going where I'm allowed to go. Just tell me where I'm allowed to go. That's all I'm asking for. I don't think that's hard. What does this get me into? Where can I go with this? What is included in the 600 fucking dollars that I paid for this wristband? That's my only question. It should not be difficult for me to figure that out. Your employees should know that. I later heard from some other people because I, for the, now I'm, again, I'm not talking about the award show, but at the award show, it was first come first serve seating. So I ended up seating between a couple who also was there for the first time. Uh, this was like their once in a lifetime time to go. They decided they were like, we're going to go all out. We spent $600 on this trip, all this like, for the ticket, all this stuff. Okay. For both of them. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I sat next to a guy who's been to five of the award shows. Talked to both of them. They were also confused by what their wristband got them. They were confused by what, where they were allowed to go and all of that. But what they also were very disappointed by was that they went all four days and they got their, the event for the last day of the event actually started at 11 instead of 12, because it was going to end at four instead of eight because they had the award show and they wanted to get the models time change all the stuff, get them time to set up, move that around all of that. But I believe that the award show and the expo hall are designed by two different, it's like two different entities, both under AVN. I don't know why I did this. I think it's an A, <laughs> but they went at 11 and we're walking around and they were like, we're honestly disappointed. We wasted the cab fare. We wouldn't have even come today. They told me that they had actually reached out to a lot of the models that they were looking to see. And they were told that, yeah, we're going to be there this day, this day, this day, this is where I'll be. They actually reached out to the models directly to figure out where they were going to be. But when they got there on Saturday, very few people were there. Very few models were there. And I noticed this as well, but I noticed it less so for the models and more so for the attendees. It was a much sparser crowd. And apparently they asked one of the organizers, oh yeah, no, everyone's been drinking and partying all last night and the week they're all sleeping in. That's why they're not here. And so they were frustrated because they were there. They paid to see the models and the models, at least that they were looking for, were not there when they were supposed to be apparently according to them, this guy that was sitting on my other side told me that, yeah, you know, you got to cut them some slack because they're used to having it at the hard rock. And this is the first time having it at resorts world, at which point I told him, like I told you, there was a difference between bad communication and no communication. There was no communication leading up to the event. And there was very, it was very hard for me to get questions answered by the event itself, the, the organizers while I was at the event. I understand being frazzled. I understand being frustrated. I understand being spread thin. 
And that's one thing, but it shouldn't be hard to say, this is where you are allowed to go. This is what is included in the ticket that you paid for. That's not difficult to do. Throughout the expo area, they had QR codes that basically said like, find your way around AVN or like your guide to AVN. It was a map that was functionally useless, that was just blank and had no actual useful information on it. As far as the attendees go, I will say much more older couples than I was expecting. I really go into these events blind. And so I tried not to watch any other YouTubers videos from AVN, no other streams from AVN, none of that. Um, obviously I knew about the event, so I'd seen videos in the past, but leading up to the event, I did not do any more research. I was genuinely surprised, not in a bad way. I was just like, oh wow, like this is like a lot of older couples. They're all talking with the models all together, lots of hand holding, very sweet. And I don't know, I just thought that was nice. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> you find someone that loves what, likes what you're into. I like that. To be honest, I was expecting a lot more younger men, like 19 to like 25 is really what I was expecting. Not that they weren't there, but it was a much smaller demographic of the people that were there than I was expecting. There was a lot more groups of men and single men that were older. What happened a lot, it, it's kind of interesting because there is also a lot of overlap, not just between CES and AVN, but AVN and VidCon, okay? There's just more titties here. Same with TwitchCon, actually. All of these events, again, there's so much overlap in the content creator space that it's it's fascinating, honestly. Like there, there's a study here. There's an anthropological study here. I truly think so, okay? There's this phenomenon when you're a fan of someone, and I've experienced this, my friends have experienced this, I'm sure a lot of these models have experienced where people don't want you to know how much they're a fan of you. I've experienced this mostly from men. Women have no problem being like, oh my God, I love your videos, which is very sweet. Always appreciate it. If you do it in public and you yell across the room, I'm going to pee my pants. <laughs> I have anxiety. I don't know what to tell you. But guys do this more often than not where they try to seem cool about it. Like, yeah, I watch you. I know who you are, but like, I'm cool, <laughs> which is fine, but it's interesting. This happened a lot actually at chess boxing when I went to Ludwig's event, uh, the Mogul Money event. Guys in particular would be like, hey, can I get a picture? Like really quick <laughs> and get a picture and then go off like, cool, nice meeting you, bye. And we keep going. And then my dad would tell me like, I need you to know that I saw him hyping himself up behind you for like 30 seconds, <laughs> which is fine and very sweet. It's fine, okay? But I just think that that's very interesting, the difference between uh, my experiences with uh, female viewers and fans who are very much like, I love your videos. Oh my God, I, I'm freaking out that you're here right now. Like it's just, and then guys were just like, hi, bye. And then going, but then also they were probably also experiencing a little bit of the fandom element that you just experience when you're a fan of someone sometimes, you know, which is fine. It's normal and healthy. I want you to know that it's okay. It's just an interesting difference between how you want to come across to this person that you're a fan of. And I get it. I watched the movie Starstruck too. I know I'm supposed to pretend that I have no idea who any of five seconds of summer is if I want to get laid. Okay. I know that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm very certain half of them are married now or in relationships. I can't make those jokes anymore. <laughs> but I would also notice this a lot. I would see this happen a lot with guys. They would have their camera open, photos and video, and they would walk by as say someone in lingerie is doing poses, taking photos with someone else, doing something sexy, whatever. They would take photos rapid fire as they were walking, not looking at her, rapid fire. They would make sure it's in frame, keep walking. Really, really quick standstill. Keep going. And I don't know if it was just to like not come across as creepy. Again, there's a lot of instances of overlap where it's like it was it was understandable and expected at a lot of these events that you are going to be taking videos and having cameras out. People, you guys ask me like, how are you comfortable vlogging and filming at a lot of these events or talking to a camera at these events? You just kind of got to get used to it and accept that no one really cares <laughs> for the most part. It depends on the event. There are some events where I have been screamed at for filming. Um, there are some places, Boost in particular, companies in particular that will scream at you for filming. And that's just kind of how the world works. You just got to kind of tamp down that part of your brain that's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> But this event, people were having their phones out, people were filming. It wasn't like shameful to be taking videos and photos 
while you were at this event. Okay. And so I just thought that was interesting that that was something that I saw and experienced multiple times of men who were clearly interested in what was happening, but did not want to be caught being interested in what was happening. You know what I mean? And again, that could be a personal shame or whatever's going on there, or just a personal anxiety, not wanting to be called out because there were times where I'd be walking around, I would glance at a model, smile or whatever, like just to be friendly. And if you'd be like, Hey, come on, let's come talk over here. And I get that some people are not comfortable with that, you know? And so it could be things like that. That. I got this one clip. I don't know if I can show the actual model in this clip because she's uh, scantily clad in a pose, but she was like doing like almost like a bunch of different poses for photos. And there was like a horde of paparazzi in a sense that were taking videos and photos of her. And it wasn't just like uh, men and stuff. It was women in this horde as well. And I just thought that was, inter- I, I'm always interested in like the different, not only like of things of these events, but also like the types of people that goes to these events. And again, it was a lot of, I don't want to say regular people because that's not the word. Because I, I know there's plenty of people that watch porn, you know, like I watch porn. I don't care. Do you watch porn? Comment down below if you watch porn. Overall, the event was fun. I think that where the value comes in for the VIP tickets as well is not just the expo hall, not just the early access, um, but it comes in with the parties after the event. So each night there is a different party. So the first night was the Hall of Fame party where they in more people into the Hall of Fame for ABN. I was going to go to the 40th anniversary party. I planned for it. I was there. I was ready. And then I got freaking food poisoning from something at CES. I think it was the chicken carbonara sandwich I had uh, because I was violently ill for a night. It was super fun and exciting. There's a lot of things I will tolerate. Throwing up in front of porn stars, I will not tolerate from myself. (laughs) I have limits for what I will allow myself to deal with, okay? The January 6th, there was the white party. I don't know what that entailed. I think it was just wear white to the party. Um, I ended up going to a CES YouTube party instead. AVN Awards after party, which was included in the VIP ticket. I went to that for a whopping five minutes. I, that had more to do with the award show than the actual after party itself. It was just loud. It was dark. It was cold. I was in a gown. <laughs> I literally did like a lap, looked around, checked things out, saw that they did not have food, and I left. It was midnight. I was like, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to get something from the 24-hour Starbucks. Resorts World has a 24-hour Starbucks. Did you know this? It makes up for the fact that their elevators make my ears pop. Like every single time I got in their elevators, they're, I don't know what's going on with your elevators. You got to work on that. I can see where the value would come in for the after parties themselves. Um, I just, I, in particular, was not able to go to all of them. And then also the $600 is what included the ABN awards as well. VIP, I think the $400, $499, I don't think that included the ABN awards. And that's where that price came in. So you would only get the expo and then the after parties themselves. And then you also could have potentially not gone to the uh, award show and instead gone to the after parties. If you want to be around these people and all of that and other people that are interested in what you're interested in, after parties are probably for you. Anyways, that's going to be it. Do I think this is worth it? Yes, because I do think that it's one of those like once in a lifetime experiences. Um, However, like I said, a lot of people that I did end up meeting had been to several ABN expos and several ABN awards. I think it depends on what you're really wanting to get out of it. Also, I should point out there was a lot of influencers, a lot of content creators, a lot of celebrities that pulled up not just the awards, but also to the event itself. A lot of podcasters pulled up. We're doing podcasts and stuff. So I don't know. You you can get a lot out of this event if you time it right, you know? All in all, I had a very good time at the event as far as the $600 go. To go to the awards show and all of that, I would say it was worth it. As far as going again, I don't know actually, you know? Because I mean, if I had a couple of models that I was obsessed with, that I, this was the only place I could see them, then yes, to me, this would be worth it. See, again, I think it just depends on, you know, your interests and all of that, because for me personally, going once, probably fine, as a fan, at least. From a uh, anthropological, a social media anthropological approach and things like that, and the culture of it all, it was very fascinating. <laughs> oh my God, that is just a fancy way of saying you're a voyeur. God damn it. Anyways, that's gonna be it. Um, have you been to ABN? Have you ever heard of ABN? 
Uh, would you go to AVN? What do you think is the proper term for uh, calling adult stars, models, adult content creators? What do you think if you are an adult content creator? What do you prefer? Have you ever been a part of AVN? Would you like to be a part of AVN? What are your thoughts on that? Would you like to come on my podcast and talk about it? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shanae's Podcast. It's coming back, I swear. It's happening in January, I promise. Reminder, I have merch like this mug on Teespring and Fourth Wall will have its own design coming for this video. We are bringing those back. Again, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like supporting my Patreon, let me see down below. If you like to me know social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Keep it PG. Multiple men came up to me at this event and asked me for photos. And I don't know if they thought I was a model I don't know if they were just like hot woman photo. Yes. Um, or if they thought they knew me from somewhere, but didn't know where they knew me from somewhere, but they didn't want to assume in case I got offended. Could always be that. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris, Pete, Crash, BC, China, Dirty One, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eol, Helpless, Incognito, Isaiah, Jack Ray, James, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Cammy, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexis, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, Me, Lord, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Rudd, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Sierra, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Heavenly, Plastic, Tom, Querty, Randy, Winter, Wendy, William, Zendry's Week.